you know, sometimes it can do a lot over some food. In New Orleans, we do a lot over food. We meet and plan big things over food. Gumbos are a good mixture of things, of food, and sometimes I say people like gumbo pot. It takes all different kinds of people to make a good world, just like it takes all kinds of things to make a good bowl of gumbo. So, what goes into a good gumbo? I'm in New Orleans visiting a 95-year-old New Orleans chef, art and jazz lover, the legendary Leah Chase, for a master class in cooking this famous Louisiana dish. How are you doing, Miss Chase? I am fine, Dr. Conyers. I am fine. I'm happy to be here. It's a pleasure to be here at your restaurant, the Dookie Chase Restaurant. It's an institution in the New Orleans community. Well, thank you so much, and I'm glad you're here. Oh, wow. You know, Dr. Conyers, you'll find all kinds of gumbos here in this city. But you know, I have not had a bad one. One thing I have learned living here is that New Orleanians are very particular about their gumbo. All over this country, all over, you think gumbo. What do you think about? So, okra. That's, that's the gumbo I'm accustomed to in South Carolina. Okra and tomato and corn and shrimp. No corn, Dr. Kanye. I'll put corn in gumbo. Miss Leah Chase is known as the queen of Creole cuisine. And Dookie Chase Restaurant is famous in New Orleans, especially for its gumbo. A Louisiana gumbo is a dish that represents three founding cultures, African, Native American, and European, particularly the Spanish and French. Gumbo is made from ingredients easily available in this part of the country, wild game, sausage, seafood, and vegetables. When you cook and you use what you have, you make do with what you have. There is a science to preparing this delicious concoction and a complicated history. Where did gumbo come from originally? Not the French, as some people think. The name gumbo comes from a West African word for okra, pronounced ying gumbo, or in a shortened form, gumbo. Okra came with enslaved Africans who were brought to Louisiana in the 1700s, and it formed the basis of this traditional stew. You know, we do a special gumbo on Fridays that we do just with okra, crabs, and shrimp. Of course, you can put meat in it, whatever you like to put in it. When okra was not available, other thickening agents were used. And in here as the thickener, we have filet. Filet is the Choctaw word for ground sassafras leaves used to season gumbo. Another type of gumbo thickener is known as a roux. It's flour browned in hot oil, sometimes as light as cafe au lait or as dark as chocolate. There are two main categories of Louisiana gumbo, Cajun and Creole. Creole, just a mixture of things. What I call the original mixture in New Orleans, and that was the mixture of French and Spanish. Then you come down to my neck of the woods and you might have French, you might have Spanish, but you got a lot of African, a lot of Haitian, a lot of that island thing. And so that's our mixture here. And we don't make a, the Creoles don't make a thick gumbo. They make one like this, it's more like a soup. But you can see there's everything going in. And I tell the customers, it's just like going fishing. You get what you get. You get what you get? <laughs> you get what you get. So look, we got- You have... might get a piece of chicken, you might get a shrimp, you might get a sausage, get a little piece of veal stew. We, now, I never knew why the Creoles put veal stew in it. But then when I realized the Creoles of color like meat in everything. So I think the meat, the veal stew was just to add. So when you ate a bowl of gumbo, you had a, a hearty meal. A hearty meal, kind of like a beef because, stew. Because, yeah, the stew, it was the, you know, beef, darling, no veal. Beef. veal. You know, the Creoles worked with veal. It picked up the flavor from all the other ingredients, and that stew tastes so good when you get a piece of it. <laughs> that veal, I'm gonna have to try that. Mm -hmm. Then, there's the type of Creole gumbo Miss Chase is famous for on one day every year. It's gonna get crazy out there, feel crazy. On Holy Thursday, the day before Good Friday and Easter, this is the place to be. Mm -hmm. And I think your famous uh, gumbo's the herbs. Gumbo. Gumbo Zerb. Zerb. Oh, she don't correct me. Thank you. And that's all I serve today is Gumbo Zerb and fried chicken. Basically, 
It's greens, lots of them. Today we have turnip greens, spinach, we have mustard greens, kale, Swiss chard, we put cabbage in it. We, usually we used to put peppergrass in it. The Creoles would go around, but you can't find the peppergrass anymore. So I use watercress and arugula to give it that little bite. You grind them all and boil them down with onions and a lot of seasonings in it. Spicy Creole sausage, ham, chicken, and stewed meat. It's a lot of work. But the real secret, it's a numbers game. You have to put uneven numbers. Even numbers, bad luck. So you put uneven numbers of greens. I say you will acquire a new friend for every green I have in the pot. So if I do nine greens, you're gonna get nine new friends. And one of them will be rich. Well, hopefully I'm in that uh, pot, one of your friends, but I don't know if I'm the rich one. <laughs> <laughs> we get the rich friend. Hello, Jackie. Oh my goodness, Jackie, you're here. You're a holy Thursday. Thank you, you so much. This lady has been coming for years, years. Yeah, we've gone uh, white together, I think. Look, let me buy to you. I'm going to buy to you right now. That's what I'm going to do. You look good, girl. I'm hanging. But they come. I don't care who you are. You coming on Holy Thursday to get that cup. No, that's a big deal in New Orleans. It's baby. a big deal. They it's look a big forward. deal in this house. We served about 1,500 people. 1,500 people? On Holy Thursday. Wow. And we served out. It's so much fun. The other main type of gumbo is Cajun gumbo. Cajun gumbo is most often made with a very dark root. Both Cajun and Creole rely heavily on what's known as the Trinity, chopped and sauteed onion, celery, and bell pepper. Looking at this crowd, it's hard to believe that Hurricane Katrina nearly destroyed this restaurant in 2005. Dookie Chases has weathered lots of storms over the years. People came before integration because if they had to meet with black people, they either met in the church or they met here. And then you see, we'd get all the musicians when they'd get all, well, you know, Ray Charles, this was Ray's place. Uh, when Pete Fountain would close, when Al Hurt had his place on Bourbon Street, Lena Horn always liked her fried chicken. Sarah Vaughn was a sweetheart, and she liked stuffed crabs. I love to eat, I love food, love to see other people eat. And it, when you see people enjoy food, they are so happy enjoying that food. And I think mostly that's why I like to cook. So how about this? We put some of your gumbo next to my whole hog, and what can we do? We have a good dinner. We can change the world. We can change the world. Because you come over, and we invite you over to eat that hog and that gumbo, then we can talk about everything. This program is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.